Well then, looks like I've been sleeping on the Angler Survival Guide a wee bit. Now don't get me wrong, I've seen its potential as Milko here shared it with my Discord mere hours after the update first released, but while I've been shouting about the moon and the rain, Milko and company have been milking the sea. Before you now are both of Milko's methods for spam farming ocean fish with this new novel, and while it is quite gimmicky and potentially quite expensive, and we will be showing them off here today, I'm thinking that slowing things down a wee bit to help flesh out the book itself might actually surprise you more than endless fish food. The thing is pretty darn neat, so be prepared to catch this upcoming info, folks. And to begin, let us talk its new craft as of the most recent hotfix. The book used to require a sea fishing rod on top of a couple wooden bobbers, but now it's just the bobbers. And some papyrus, of course, but that's that's the easy bit to come by as wicker. Bobbers, however, might still elude some who have never really done any ocean fishing, thus never truly made any tackle receptacles here, and it will require some seafaring to acquire the driftwood at first, but once you do do all of that, the rest is history, as wooden ball bobbers only cost one log each, folks. One log, that's absolutely nothing. And once you start actually seeing and hearing what the novelty novel can do for us, that cheap craft might actually shock you. Each angler survival guide offers us three reeds, and every reed is gonna spawn random schools of ocean fish all around us, sometimes three at once. Now the type of fish that spawn will depend on the ocean depth, of course, so we can anticipate these smaller guys to be most common in coastal waters with the chance of a larger mudfish school now and then. Swell oceans is where things start to get immediately interesting, as not only will much larger fish like deep bass and black catfish begin to be the more common sights, we can now start spawning more and more narwhals and rock jaws to go along with all of these ocean fishies for some otherwise evasive loot. Namely, the narwhal horns. Now, rough and hazardous waters will roughly be the exact same as swell ones, only more dandy lionfish are gonna be present. Waterlogged biomes get a worthy mention here as large Swedish fish, fall lounder, and bloomfin tuna will be abundant with each reed and within their proper seasons, of course. Which, speaking of, should actually be noted highly, as the book will help spawn the seasonal ocean fish far faster and consistently if you do so choose to use it as such. And finally, if we were to have any of the year of events on, both dappled koi variants would have a chance to spawn in all ocean levels but hazardous waters, meaning we would have more large fish and shallower oceans. It's gonna be worth it. Trust me. But some other notes to help drive home how useful the book will be beyond Milko's fish farming would be that we don't actually have to be on the water in order to use it, which can be advantageous, as this only serves to make land-based ocean fishing all the more simple-like, and that we have the bookcase in play now too, so making several angler survival guides to continuously switch back and forth between them while others recharge means everything you just saw and will see is going to be highly repeatable. But yes, it's finally time for the talk of spamming the book in a small area that has been intentionally contained via our new docs. Why should we care, Beard? Well, it's a good question, honestly, as Milko's two gathering techniques are neat, sure, however, they're also costly. The Strident Trident Blueprint can drop from Claus's loot stash, of course. However, most will come by it via a Crab King kill. Not only that, every Trident is going to cost three Narwhal horns each. All that said, I will give it this. 50 uses if only used when rocking out is not bad at the end of the day. The cannon method isn't all that bad either, honestly. Especially when we can actually stack the loot we're about to get this time around. But the process of actually getting said cannons is potentially a painful one. So then, my advice, screw them both. Once you have got the docks and books, just go fishing in your man-made ponds. Heck, if you're using the proper lures, you'll be able to snag them instantly anyways. No crafting any additional cannonball ammo or any boss killing required. 
but you do you. Oh, but before we end the day on some final reasons why spawning so many ocean fish is gonna be good for us, we should probably be mentioning how to actually store them in tin fishing bins to keep them fresh, how we will have to find the new Moon Key Island in order to even have a chance for any of the cannon grass via banana offerings, and lastly, how we will have to do the exact same bloody thing for them new docks we so desperately need for all of this here today. So yeah, as I said, Milko's methods might be a bit costly. Which is exactly why I began the day by simply showing you all what the book can do by itself out there in the normal waters. Ocean fish are not going anywhere unless they get too far away from us, so spamming their spawns and fishing them out with rods or trawlers or anything you can can lead to some of the best foods in the game. Spoiled fish is also an option with its rot and bone shards. Easier friendship quests can potentially be on the horizon as Pearl does love fish trading especially if they're seasonal ones. And maybe, just maybe, even a different playstyle or two can be yours if you do this early. Folks, I'm just here to outline the possibilities. What you do with any of the information is up to you. Go right ahead and make any of Milko's farms and forever swim in fish loot. Head out there in the high seas during the blistering heat or the winds of winter for them seasonal fishies for some more interesting loot. Or just simply make waiting for any ocean fish schools out there a breeze as we no longer have to wait, of course. Whatever the case, there you have it. Another special guide on yet another of Wickerbot special books. The Angler's Survival Guide is continuing the recent tradition of having way more to it than meets the eye, so hopefully some of you here today have found a new appreciation for it. If you can think of anything obvious that I have missed, please feel free to let me know. But before you go wondering why most of the ocean fish farming took place in the shallow waters, remember that docks cannot be placed beyond the coastal oceans. Even still, get to fill in them seas, everyone. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.